guys, it's Julio from Lawn Care Business Success. And uh, I thought I would show you guys today uh, how to adjust the valves on a still four mix type machine. Now this is something you can do quite easily on your own. Uh, and you guys, if you follow me, you've heard my frustration surrounding uh, the four mix design and how the valves seemingly uh, are constantly going out of uh, adjustment. Now it's not a big job to do, it's actually quite easy. It's just that uh, it seems to always happen at the wrong times uh, when you're trying to get the work done, trying to, uh, you know, uh, move on to that next client uh, or you're behind uh, in your work. Uh, so uh, let's tear this down and I'll show you how you can quickly and easily adjust your own valves on your steel for mixed uh, type uh, trimmers uh, or blowers. Okay, so adjusting the valves on your steel four stroke uh, four mix machine uh, is actually quite easy, um, but uh, just a little bit uh, tedious. You will need um, a couple of tools. You'll need your um, still tool, uh, screwdriver tool, to be able to take out uh, the screws. There's a couple on this side and then one on the back side here. Uh, and then you're going to need uh, a feeler gauge set. Um, so uh, the size you need um, is actually, I don't know if you guys can uh, see that there, uh, but a 0 .004 uh, or 0 0.4. 10 millimeter uh, feeler gauge. Um, the other thing to note is because of where the feeler gauge has to go in, um, you need a bit of a point here. Uh, so this particular set here all comes with uh, rounded uh, ends on the feeler gauge sizes um, in varying sizes. So I just took the size that I actually needed and I actually took a grinder and ground down the two sides to give it a point to fit uh, where I need uh, it to go. Um, and you can see this one's a little bit bent on the end because it is so thin, the tolerances, um, that when you're trying to get it into the spot, uh, it's really quite flexible and can bend. Now Still uh, actually sells a kit for adjusting their valves that comes with a new um, valve cover gasket seal and a uh, feeler gauge. Um, but uh, I always just reuse the seal uh, that's there and uh, just use my own uh, feeler gauge. So the first thing you need to do is uh, take off the screws. And then you can just take the cover off and set that aside. Now I'm just going to flip the unit back around. So you can see the uh, unit here. And now we're also gonna take this screw off here, off of the valve cover gasket. Or sorry, the valve cover, I should say. I'll just put this screw aside in a separate location away from the, the ones from the cover. So just take that off and there's your valves. And you can see there is a little uh, valve gasket uh, sitting here. If I just move it a little bit you can uh, kind of see it coming loose. Uh, but I find that if I just leave it there I have no issues with uh, uh, adjusting it. Uh, so <clears throat> You're also going to need, I forgot to mention, besides your feeler gauge and your uh, still tool or screwdriver, uh, you're also going to need a um, socket set uh, to remove or a wrench to loosen and tighten uh, these nuts here. Okay, so I find that either a 8 millimeter or a uh, 5 16 socket uh, will do the trick. Uh, they're both uh, uh, pretty much identical. Uh, so <clears throat> I'll just put one on the end of my ratchet here. And I'm going to turn the machine over again so you can see a bit better the process here. Um, so what you want to do first of all um, 
is inside the engine there you'll see the flywheel now marked on the flywheel in between uh, the fins and I know it's very difficult to see there but uh, you'll see a fin that has an arrow uh, on it so I'm just gonna keep turning it to find uh, the one with the arrow so marked uh, on the inside of those fins um, there'll be an arrow and on the bottom side here Underneath uh, this here, this uh, electrical uh, box here, there's a screw that mounts this electrical box. And what you want is you want to turn the fins uh, where you, when you find that arrow, and you want the arrow to line up to be pointing at the screw uh, that's on uh, that uh, area there. So if I move this to the side here, so that you can see the uh, screw there right at the bottom of the electrical box that I'm uh, talking about and you'll see on the fins there you'll see an arrow you can see the screw that I'm talking about right in there and you can see the arrow on the flywheel pointed up at the screw Okay, so once you've lined up uh, the screw, or sorry, the arrow to that screw there, um, it's time to adjust the valves. Now the other thing I could mention is that you could also remove the cover here and remove the spark plug. You'll notice when you're turning uh, the fins there uh, on that flywheel that uh, because of the compression built up inside the engine, uh, it can be hard to turn at times. If you remove the spark plug completely, it makes it a lot easier to turn when you're lining up so that is uh, an option uh, to do as well to make things uh, a little bit uh, easier on yourself I'll just move this spark plug uh, wire out of the way just for uh, the visuals uh, of it now so you can see how loose the valves can actually get if you leave them for a long time they can get completely loose uh, just like this one is here and you can practically turn it sideways so this is where you're going to take your feeler gauge and you're going to see that uh, it needs to be quite narrow to fit just in between this little area here above the spring but underneath uh, this little rocker and you're going to take your wrench put it on tightening and you're going to start to turn it now yours may not need this amount of adjustment if it's not that loose but you can see here as you start to tighten it it'll become uh, harder and harder so uh, to pull the feeler gauge out so I've got the feeler gauge pinched in between there now and I can't pull it out so I've essentially gone too uh, tight with it so I'm gonna loosen it a little bit back off a little bit and you can see I can pull it out so the key here is to see if I can push it in and pull it out easily so that you can feel the resistance but it still lets you pull the feeler gauge in and out in between I'm gonna move the camera so you guys can get a better look at this so here's what I'm talking about you're putting it right in here and you're going in between the top of the spring here but underneath the rocker So again, if I loosen this, you'll see that I can easily pull this in and out. As I start to tighten, you'll see now I've got it pinched in there, I can't even actually pull it out. So now I've got to loosen it just a little bit, tug on it a little bit. Loosen it until that feeler gauge comes out. So there we go, came out. And I checked to see. So for me, this is still a bit loose. So I'm gonna put the socket back on it and I'm gonna tighten just a tiny little bit. 
doesn't take much. So as you can see now, I'm trying to see if I can put the feeler gauge in and out. I can feel the resistance, but I can still pull it in and take it out. And that's what you want. Now on to the next side. And this is done exactly the same. Put it in until it's tight and then back off until I can pull it out. Just a little bit at a time. And there we go. I'm going to check it. A little bit too tight, I think. There we go. So I can pull it in and out. I can feel that resistance. Perfect. See how I'm, I can pull it in and out, but it's got a bit of resistance. It's perfect. Check this side again. I'll loosen this one just a hair. Perfect. And that's it. Once you get the feeler gauge to the point where you can put it in between those rocker arms, and the spring, the valve springs, and it's nice and tight like that, um, you're ready to go. And you just take your uh, valve cover, put it back on. If you've um, removed the spark plug at all, then now would be the time to put that back in. Put the valve cover on. This one's now tight there. Then all that's left is to put your orange cover back on. And that's it guys, that's how you adjust the valves on a still 4-mix machine.